Anybody go to school today? Um, so you're on vacation. You went to school. You went to school? I went to school on Tuesday night. Good for you. You must be really smart. No, it's just my teacher. Uh, all right. Well, what are we going to do first here? Anybody remember? What would you say? Ah, uh, Hannah, Hannah. Did it work? Did it work? Ah, okay. All right. So we're going to do it tonight, a simple offering. We're going to sing it twice through. We're going to sing it the first time with the words, but the second time without the words. But we're also going to start a little lower than we started, and then the second time we're going to sing it our regular the regular key that we sang it in. You'll, you don't have to worry about figuring out what key. It'll sound right with the piano, so you can figure out where it goes. But we're just going to do it a little different tonight. So I don't think you need to stand up yet. We'll sit down. This is our warm-up, right? Okay. I think I've figured it out. So about two-thirds of us know all the words to the whole song. And the other third knows almost all the words. 
just a few that we haven't learned. So we're doing really good with that. So just keep working. Every time you see it, think, okay, I've got to get that anywhere first and the everywhere second. And I've got to get all those little extra words in the middle. But you've almost got it. You're doing really good on that one. Okay, let's do You'd Better Do It next. And we should be getting all the words to this now. The verses are a little harder, so it might take us a little longer to get the verses to this. But we know the main part to this one. This is a good one. All right, here we go. know the main part of that because I hear every single person singing all the words. The part where pastor just took the words off, you already know them. You don't need the words to that. But we don't know the third verse very well because everybody was like, "Uh uh-oh, when we got there. So let's look at the third verse one more time and let's stand up and do it, okay? So stand up and sing it the best you can. And I just realized I went two minutes over, so I'm going to hurry up and do it. (laughs) And we'll go to the next thing. Ready? Here we go. He brought him up on the dry ground and jumped up. I was like, wait a minute, that's not right. <laughs> we can make it work, but that wasn't quite right. We were trying to. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Ready? One more time. For three days and nights he stayed inside that fish and how he prayed until the Lord told that. Great. Okay, sit down. And I have words in case you want to take them home and work on them, but I'll save these until the second time, and then I'll give them to you because I don't want you to lose them between then and now. Okay, I think it's time for Miss Janice to come and do the missionary story. I'll go get the iPad. Okay, here's, here's Hudson Taylor, and we're going to start with um, something here, the map. First, this map, remember, this is the map of the world, and this is where we live, United States. This is where Hudson Taylor was born in England. Does anybody remember what year he was born? You don't have to know it, but it's interesting. Yes, Zachary. 1835. Close, 1832. Very, very good. So in other words, in relation to the Civil War, he was born before the Civil War. 
We, we kind of know the Civil War in America, right? 1860, around there. But, and this is China, okay? And how old was Hudson Taylor when he sailed to China? Hannah, do you know? 21. Excellent. That's a young man. He was 21, and he had, all that he had learned, remember he had learned a trade, he worked with his father in the, uh, what kind of work did his father do, and that he helped his father? Mercedes. Yes, medicine, like a pharmacy. So he helped his father with that. And then remember, he uh, even went to medical school in London before he go went to, um, to China. And remember, what happened before he first went to China where they thought he might not even make it to China? Does anybody remember that part? Somebody besides Han had said, um, wait a minute. Uh, Kyle, sorry, my mind went blank. Well, that's not what I'm asking. That is true. But I mean, before he ever went to China, something happened. Does anybody remember? I'll see if I can find the picture. All right. Uh, you remember, Kyle? He got very sick. Remember, he was taking care of sick people, but a man had died, and he was in helping with that situation. He must have gotten the germs, and they said, you're going to die. You better go home. And he said, I hope that I don't die, because I think the Lord has work for me to do in China. Now, last night when we ended up, we had this picture. Uh, one minute. This one. What, who can tell me about this picture? Toy? Yes, very good. You can tell the story now. That was excellent. I know. That was excellent. And you know, but God had a plan for him. He was not done in China. And you know, Hudson had been practicing trusting the Lord for, for this long time, ever since he was a young boy and he got saved. Uh, does anybody remember how old he was when he got saved? I'm guessing on this too, but I, I should look this up. What do you think, Kyle? Okay, I was thinking it was 17, but it's somewhere in there. He was, yeah, he was, yeah, I think it was somewhere in there. Very good. But all those years, he had been trusting the Lord. Once he got saved, he gave everything to God. And you know, boys and girls, that song that we've been singing with Mrs. Jennifer, help me give you anything, everything, holding nothing back from you, right? That's how we want to live our lives. Hudson Taylor is a good example for us, but uh, he's still just a man, right? Jesus is the only perfect one that ever is. He's God, but we want to give God everything of our lives, just like Hudson Taylor. We want to give our lives, love the Bible. I hope, we hope that you boys and girls are reading your Bibles, right? You're bringing your Bibles. Hope you take time at home to read it, and this is what Hudson did, and so now it's like, well, dear Lord, I think you must have something else for me here in China, and sure enough, God did. So Hudson went to uh, another town that was called Ningpo. Ningpo was an old city, and he went there because he had two missionary friends that lived there, Dr. Parker and Dr. Some, or Mr. Uh, somebody, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Dr. Parker and Mr. Jones. So he went to Ningpo to get more medicine and equipment for, when, for doing his work. And Dr. Parker and Mr. Jones said, Hudson, why don't you live in this town? We rented a house on Bridge Street. You could rent that house, and you could live upstairs in the attic. And the downstairs room you can use to serve the Lord. You can uh, teach people about uh, reading and writing. You can help the sick. You can feed the people that are hungry every night for supper. In the evening, you can teach the people about Jesus. 
And Hudson thought, why not? I don't have anywhere else to live, right? He didn't have anywhere else to live. So that's what he did. And I'll show you a picture of Ningpo. It's a little town, little street, and that's where he lived. Well, God had a surprise for Hudson, and wait till you hear this. In Ningpo, there was another place that was a school for missionary girls. And there was a real pretty little English teacher that taught there. And she was a bright, cheerful young lady. And Hudson Taylor got to know her. And as he got to know her, he started to love her. Now, we have somebody in our church that have gotten to know each other and that are loving each other. And they're not married yet. You know who they are? Toy. Toy. Toy, who are they? (laughs) Mr. Grant and Miss Lily, yes. And God brought them together. Isn't that precious? Well, Hudson Taylor really seemed that as he got to know her a little more, he was thinking that he began to love her. But the thing is, as he prayed about it, he thought, maybe God wants her to be my wife. But you know, it takes two people to decide that, right? So even though Hudson Taylor thought she might like to be his wife and prayed about it, it has to make sure if she thinks that. So he one time told her his secret. And do you know what? She felt the same way about Hudson Taylor. And so they grew to love each other and got to know each other. They both were putting the Lord first. They both were serving the Lord in China. And so remember years ago when Hudson Taylor was a young man and he loved another girl, but her parents said, you can't marry her if you're going to take her to China. Remember that? Remember he talked to her and she said, I don't want to go to China. And remember, he had a big struggle. Should I give up going to China? But he didn't. He put the Lord first. And some years later, here God provided a godly young girl for him to marry. Do you know what her name was? Maria Dyer. Maria Dyer. One day, Hudson Taylor, where where he lived... Remember, he was never very, he never had very much money, but God always met his needs. One day, Hudson Taylor ate kind of a simple breakfast, not much, but it was enough to keep his body and soul together, as they say. And, but he had no money left. And that day, Maria Dyer and a friend were supposed to come for tea. And he was like, oh no, what are we going to serve them? We have no food. I have no money to buy food. So, of course, you would think that Hudson Taylor would do this. He asked his friend, Mr. Jones, let's pray about this. And they did. And they prayed for God to please either send money or send food. A little while later, some of, one of their Chinese teacher friends came in. Mr. Judson, the letters have come. And when they opened the letters... One of them had some money in it, and they were able to buy food for them to have tea. Isn't that wonderful how God answered prayer? So Maria and her friend came, and they ate their tea. But then Hudson thought, I really have to be fair to Maria. She might not want to live like I do. And so he talked to her, and he said, Maria, I want to ask you. He said, I live a pretty poor life. God always meets my needs, but there are many times, there have been many times when I don't know where the next meal is going to come from. Are you willing to live like that? If, if you be my wife, would you be willing to live like that? Maria's eyes sparkled. She said, Hudson, I have been an orphan for some years since my father died, and I have learned to trust my heavenly father He's always met my needs. I would be happy to live like that with you. God will meet our needs. And so two weeks later, they were married. How about that? And they were serving the Lord. And look here. Remember this picture? That place where Hudson had lived up in the attic? Now he and his wife lived up there. 
and that's where they lived, the little attic place. And in the morning, Maria would teach the children, teach them about uh, how to read and write and teach them about Jesus. Hudson would tend to the sick and Maria would go and visit the children's mothers and grandmothers and tell them about Jesus. And they were just serving the Lord so much. And in the evenings, Hudson would preach to them about Jesus. So they had a very happy life. Then one day, Dr. Parker had to leave for, we'll do another picture in a minute, okay, Carmen? Good question. Um, Dr. Parker had to leave to go to Scotland. But he asked Hudson, Hudson Taylor, would you pray about taking over the hospital while I'm gone? And Hudson said, I will pray about it. So he did. After he did, he said, I believe God will help me. I'd like to do that. But the doctor said, the only problem, and he had told this to Hudson beforehand. It, it wasn't like, once Hudson said, he said, oh, I have a, I have a trick for you. No, he told him before. it. He said, the only problem, I only have enough money to pay the workers at the hospital for one month. And that was part of the thing that Hudson Taylor prayed about, because not only the workers, but the patients. And how could he, how could he uh, meet the needs of all those people? He would be responsible for all the people in the hospital. But he believed that's what God wanted him to do. So then he gathered all the workers together. He said, I want to tell you, Dr. Parker has to leave for Scotland. He only has enough money to pay you for one month. I want to let you know that up front, because if you'd rather not work under those conditions, feel free to leave. You don't have to stay. Some of the people actually did leave. And so it's like, OK, who's going to help with all these sick people? But do you know what? God sent other people that were willing to help with the work. And they worked, and God met their needs. Now I'll tell you, I'm going to wrap these up because it's really getting late for game time. But I want to show you this. Uh, so this is Hudson helping uh, people. And uh, look at this picture. One day in the hospital, they had only one bag of rice left, nothing else. And they prayed about it. Do you know God in the mail sent, a, a, there was an offering for $250, which at that time in China, people earned about 50 cents a day. So that was enough to meet the needs for a long time. Hudson and his wife, um, I'm going to tell you part of this part tomorrow because we're running out of time, but. Hudson and his wife, um, oh, here, look at this picture. They're so happy because, see the money? God met the needs. And the workers told the sick people, what God, what idol of yours can meet the needs of his people like the true God can do? And many of them got saved. 16 of them during those months that they were there got saved and got baptized. Hudson Taylor, though, from all this work they were doing, he got sick. And he got so sick, they said, you're going to probably have to leave China. And he said, this was something he said, he had to get rest, in other words. He said, had I 1,000 lives, I, China, should have every one. No, not China, but Christ. Can we do too much for him? Can we do enough for such a savior? Isn't that a wonderful thing? That goes with our song, and that's what we want to do, give Christ everything. In July of 1860, now if anybody can do the math, you can tell me how old he was. This is July of 1860. He and Maria, his wife, and baby Gracie. You have a granddaughter, Gracie. You have a sister, Gracie. Um, sailed back to America. And they also had one of the Christian uh, Chinese men, Wang Lai Jun. He had been a painter, and he got saved. Um, they were sailing back to England. Guess how old uh, he was? 1860, of course, is the Civil War in our country. How old was he, Brooklyn? Good guess. He was a little older. Anybody else know? It's 
1860, he's born in 1832. 22, no. Um, Alana. Good guess, you're getting closer. No. Mercedes? No, you're still close, Hannah? Very close, you're hot, Kyle. Oh, a little unhot, but you're still hot. But you're, she was a little closer. Alana. Oh my, you're still. Uh, Livy. You got it, Livy got it. 28 years old. Look what all he did in all those years. He was only 28 and all that he had done for Christ. It, it's kind of inspiring to us, right? Okay, so we shall stop. Mr. Philip, I'm sorry, I'm five minutes over. I, I was trying to rush it, but I didn't do perfect enough for you. I'm sorry. But it is game time. Let me put this up. And tomorrow, I, I skipped a few things. I'll try to tell you tomorrow. Huh. There we go. You can go with Mr. Yeah. Philip.